The Extra Point, sponsored by Good Morning Mattress Center. What's poppin' Wiregrass? High school football looks to be a little different this week. Ten games Thursday night due to the Hurricane Ian, of course, but now we got another slate all coming your way. That's right, Austin. Last night's game were pretty eventful, so let's hope tonight we get another batch of all those good games here in the Wiregrass. That's right. Well, our game of the week should be a good one. Dale County visiting Slocum, which is right where we got Sylvie Sparks. Sylvie, what do you got for us? Game of the week, sponsored by ENG Care. Hey everyone, we return to region play this week's game of the week, a 4A region 2 battle between the Dale County Warriors and the Slocum Red Tops. These two teams haven't met since 2017. The Red Tops entered tonight 2 and 3, both wins coming at home. The Warriors 2 and 4 coming off of back to back wins. So would Slocum keep their undefeated at home streak alive or would Dale County put an end to that tonight? Here come the Red Tops, and here's their foe, the Warriors. First drive for Dale County. It's fourth down, and quarterback Dallas Hedstrom keeps it, picking up a huge first down for the Dubs. Later on, third and seven, Hedstrom scrambling, finds his man, Preston Stevens, who makes the catch and muscles his way in for the score as he's brought down. Blocked PAT makes it 6-0 Dale County. Red Tops ball, quarterback Cade Burge hands it off to Braylon Miller. He escapes several Warriors and he'll take it 42 yards for a Slocum touchdown. The Tops now lead 7-6. Warriors trying to respond, it's third down and Hedstrom is sacked by Henry Eason. Make it fourth down. This time it's Slocum's Andrew Hatton playing excellent D, bringing down Hedstrom once again, giving Slocum the ball back. Just before the half, Red Tops in scoring position. Slocum's ball, it's pitched to Rashawn Miller, who takes it 19 yards to the house. Red Tops up 13 to 6 at the break. And Slocum improves to 3-3 three and three on the season with a 27-12 win over Dale County. Next week, both of these teams hit the road. The Warriors at Geneva and the Red Tops at Andalusia. Back to you, Michael and Austin. Thanks, Sills. Now we go, now we go to the City of Progress. A lot to shake up in 7A Region 2 Enterprise. Hosts in Prattville. Yep, and the Wildcats need this win to stay up to pace with the likes of Dothan, Phoenix City, Opelika, and of course Auburn. So let's get to it. Here come the Wildcats in front of another sold out crowd there in the City of Progress in the beautiful Wildcat Stadium. Prattville, though, they're going to open up the game with a touchdown on their first drive as Cam Richardson fires one over the middle. The ref gets right in my shot. I lost the ball, but before I knew it, the Lions, they had it in the end zone. And that was not a good view there for the Wildcats. And they quickly add to it. O'Marion Parks will punch it in from inside the five. And just like that, Enterprise is down two scores at home. And sadly, Prattville kept their foot on the gas. Richardson finding Camarion Shanks, and he's going to waltz his way in. He scored the first touchdown. Here's number two. Enterprise down 21 to zero in the blink of an eye. But they would score off a block punt, and here they are trying to get it back. On the onside kick, Pat McAfee made this a famous play for the kickers. And they get the onside kick, and that will lead to a field goal attempt. However, this one had the distance, but unfortunately, it was pushed wide left. So Enterprise giving the ball back to the Lions, and they would take advantage. Richardson back to the air, going to throw one up in the corner of the end zone. And that's his guy, Shanks. They had the connection working in the first half. It is 28-7 at the break. Enterprise would go on and lose this one 42-26. They're 3-3, play Dothan next week in a major battle right there. Well, gosh darn. It's going to be game of the week, so we got a big one next week. Well, let's go now to Houston County, a tale of two different stories. Wicksburg's won three straight and is tied for first to 2A region two, hosting Geneva County, who's lost four straight. That's right, Michael. Now, Geneva County has to right the ship to stay in the playoff hunt. Here come the Panthers of Wicksburg. Off to a nice win on the road over Abbeville, which we'll get to later. The Bulldogs coming off a tough loss against rival Geneva. Late in the Panthers' first drive, Ackerman gets the low snap, recovers it, rolls out left, tosses it over to his main man, Aiden Rice. Gets it for a short drive, but it would stall. We go into the second quarter, Ackerman faking off the handoff. Cameraman, where's he at? There he is, rolls off, finds Tyler Williams, 45-yard gain, and they're in the red zone and looking for a touchdown. Make play, deep pass. Oh, yeah, wait, no, what, where, what, what, what? Six points for the Panthers as they start first. Now, after a fumble on the kickoff, Panthers regain the ball. Mason Burkhart gets the snap and drops back to look long for Tyler Williams, of course. And that big old catch is an absolute dime. Would it be enough, though? Six. Wouldn't be enough for six. They come away with three to put the Panthers up 9-0 at the end of the first half. And the final there, 23-14, Wicksburg takes it. All right, so that's 
Wicksburg, 4-0 and 2A no Region 2. That'll be good coming down the stretches. They're going to play our next team that we got right here. That's right. In the same region, Ayrton has been red hot. Right, hosting the Cottonwood Bears tonight. All right, so we're talking about it. 2A Region 2 looks to go through Ayrton. Obviously, Wicksburg's undefeated as well, but Cottonwood, they're fighting to make sure they stay in that playoff hunt, so a lot to play for in this one. And the Purple Cats sporting a backup quarterback in Andon Garris. He hands it off to the main man, Jordan Smith. Hey, he's always healthy, and he's always ready to go. He bowls his way through the end line, and he'll score on a 30-yard scamper to get the Purple Cats on the board. Cottonwood trying to answer back. Caden Simmons from under center. He's going to play action here, and he's going to look for his man. However, he's going to find a Purple Cat waiting for it, and that is Landon Tyler, usually on the receiving end on offense. Here he is making a play on defense, and back to Smith we go with the jump cut. Stiffs arm one man, and he'll barrel his way across the plane for another touchdown. That's his second of the night. That's usually spelling good things for Ayrton, and let's go back to him. Number three, there we are. That's an easy decision for the two-point conversion, I should say. Purple Cats trouncing the Bears 40-6, to putting their foot down into a Region 2. Yeah, well, coming up, we don't, uh, coming up here, we got more highlights to show you, including Samson traveling to take on Abbeville and Kingston hosting a pleasant home. Yeah, and we'll also have your play of the night, which is a good one. Stay with us. We'll be right back. You're watching The Extra Point on WDHF, sponsored by Good Morning Mattress Center.
And hey, welcome back. We're going to head out to Henry County. The Abbeville Yellow Jackets and Samson Tigers both need a win tonight, Austin. They both did, and one of them's got a win, right? Samson's still looking for win number one, while Abbeville is trying to keep pace in a 2A region two. First off, right off the bat, Abbeville would hit a field goal before Ahmad Billings hitting it over to Cameron Wallace. Giving us that finger. We love that. 21 yards to the house. 10 0 Jackets. Dab him up, baby. Give him some love. Boom. All right. First play in the second quarter, Wontavious Conley. Look at this. Punt almost blocked. And then we get that good looking ball in the air. Catches it right around. Can you guess where he caught it? I'm going to guess the 30. 30? Well, you, you'd be right. Yeah. 70 yards all the way to the house. That puts Abbeville up 17 to 0. And then Abbeville, they dance it. All right? Now, don't go away, though. Here comes Mixon Brody of the Samson Tigers, and they find the end zone, and that's when they trail by 10. But unfortunately, that's all she would really write. They take it. Abbeville takes it 53-22. Bounce back win there. Abbeville needed that. Yeah, they definitely did. And our final highlight from tonight's action, the Kinston Bulldogs back at home taking on Pleasant Home. Oh, yes. Rudy Free and the Bulldogs have lost four straight. A win tonight, of course, would go a long way for Kinston on 1A. And here they are, the Bulldogs starting with the ball. Jeb Crosby takes the direct snap. He's going to follow his blockers. Yes, sir, that convoy is going to lead him all the way inside the 20. And that would cash in. A few plays later, the big Caleb Sublin, big man rumbling and tumbling. That is a big boy for 1A. He's had 6'4", 230 about that. And I'm he would get a big, big first down somewhat again. Get in the carry and showing you why. If you're not going to tackle me, just get up out the way because I'm in the end zone. Hey, dance. Well, the cheerleaders, they're happy out there in Kinston. Here he is, Mr. Again, Kale Sublin. Showing himself all over this highlights, faking the give. In the end zone with his second score of the night. Kinston looking good, but Pleasant Home would answer. Mason Anderson getting him down the field, and he'll take it in for an eagle score. But on the ensuing kickoff, it's going to be Dylan Davis. He will get it on the right side of the field, and he's going to return it up the middle of the field. Makes one man miss right there. And he's got a wall and a hole, and he's got a whole bunch of yards to run through. Eventually, he's going to get brought down inside the 20 right here. And that is good for Kinston because, hey, you saw it there. Kale Sumlin had himself a night. He would go on to score. And Kinston wins 47 to 13. They're 2 and 4 down there in 1A. I feel bad. I feel like. Play of the night, sponsored by Lewis Smith Supply Company. All right, well, you know what time it is. Time for that play of the night. You just saw it. Let's take a look at it. Of course, our main man out of Abbeville, Wontavious Conley, taking it all the way back to the house for 70 yards. Look at him. He eats more pasture than 700 headed cattle. All the way back there. Boom, with that big snap. It didn't want to matter. He gets a touchdown as Abbeville won 53 22. You want to take a second look at it there, Austin? Let's take a second look at it. A second look? Yeah. Why not? Let's go. Reverse. Back. Reverse. Reverse. Are we going to dance to a reverse, reverse? There it oh, comes. Goes. All right, so almost a block punt. You were talking about that. Yeah. Here we go again. Montavious Conley was making plays his freshman year when Abbeville went to the state title game. Then last year for the Wolves, now he's back at Abbeville, showing us why he can really lead an offense, doing it on the special teams unit. you got to love that. For the Yellow Jackets, he's able to go on and win this one big. And so there's your play of the night, times two. Well, coming up, some more highlights and scores from other games tonight in the Wiregrass, and we recap. Last night's scores as well. Mm -hmm. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after the break.
it's still it, you polls, do, but. I pulled up, listened to rap music, and I definitely felt more in the, like, felt more, like, in the crowd. Hold on a sec. What are you saying? Oh, that's, that's being uh, axed. Yeah. I just felt more in the crowd listening to my rap music than I did anywhere else. You should pull up, listen to Morgan Wallen. All right, well, welcome back. We're going to take a look at some of the scores from the rest of the Wiregrass games tonight. That's right. Abbeville Christian at Sparta Academy. Sparta! They go down, unfortunately. Generals take this one 40 Yes, the Generals topping the Spartans. How about that? And Geneva on the road against one of the best teams in 4A, Andalusia, putting up 69 points, improving to 7-0. and Now, Headland at Greenville. I should go to Greenville. I think that'd be cool. <laughs> Greenland, Greenville. Greenville. Uh, yeah, anyway, 38-22, the Rams take it to them. All right, well, let's look back to last night's action. We got a bunch of games Thursday. Here are four scores that we got. Daleville and Ashford. Daleville trying to get four wins in a row, but Ashford picking up their first win, 38-22. And then Houston Academy remains undefeated in a back-and-forth game, knocking off Strong 33-27. to Now, Northside Methodist just couldn't get it done against Providence Christian. Eagles take it out, 117-14, while Dothan went up against the Red Devils of Phoenix City, and they just fell short 35 to 28 and that asked for daleville game that's where i was at and that was a great great, great matchup game. yep all right well let's go ahead and look ahead to next week and why not because our game of the week is a doozy enterprise coming off a loss so is dothan this is probably going to decide who gets that fourth and final spot i've had a lot of kids talking to me about how the that's going to be the biggest and most loudest uh, student section ever so Should be. we can looking forward to that rams are going up against the carol eagles that's a good it's local Match up there. Yeah. HA and Northside, another private school battle we got next week. And then Dale County in Geneva, both looking to right the ship. So, hey, we got a bunch of highlights coming your way on Facebook. So, you got to join us there. Before we go, let's go ahead and tease cheer and band of the week. Got to vote on our website. Right. And then, of course, player of the, player of the week. We'll get that to you. Coaches mm -hmm. will decide on team of the week. So, just be on the lookout for Austin Greenland and all these awards. That's right. Greenland underscore WDHN on Twitter. That's where you can find out these awards and who actually won them a little bit sooner than you could if you just tune into us and alongside make sure you get to the extra point on their facebook show yep. we love to see your support yep. and you get to tell us what you think yep we'll see you right there have a good night
This is the Extra Point Overtime. Welcome to another episode of the Extra Point Overtime. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Austin Greenland. And I'm Michael Rinker. We're going to kick it right off with our Game of the Week as we have Slocum hosting Dale County. Game of the Week, sponsored by EMG Care. Well, let's talk about it, recapping this Game of the Week, Austin. That's right. A 3-8 game. How did it play out? Well, here come the Red Tops and their foe, the Warriors. First drive for the Warriors. It's fourth down and a quarterback, Dallas Hedstrom, keeping it, picking it up for a huge first down for the Doves. Later on, third and seven. Hedstrom scrambling, finds his man, Preston Stevens, who makes it a catch and muscles his way for a score before he's brought down. Now block, pet, block punt here. The block pat makes it 6-0. Dale County and Red Top. Ball quarterback, K. Birds, would end up handing the next play off to, you know who? Rashawn Miller. There we go. Of course, he gives it up for Slocum. Warriors trying to respond. It's third down, and Hedstrom is sacked by Henry. Issa making it fourth down, and this time it's Slocum's Andrew Hatton playing ex excellent, honestly, bringing down Hedstrom once again. A few seconds left in the half. Red Tops in scoring position. Slocum's ball pitched to Rashawn Miller, who brings it in 19 yards, and they go up 13 to 6 at the break. Slocum ends up taking this one 27 to 12 over Dale County. And now we go to the City of Progress. A lot to shake up in 7A Region 2, of course. Enterprise. Hosting practice. Yep, and the Wildcats, as we told you, need to keep this win to maintain pace there in 7A. So let's get right to it. Here come the Enterprise Wildcats out of the tunnel and looking to bring on a big win in front of a packed house out in Wildcats Stadium. However, Prattville, they're going to kick things off in the scoring department as Cam Richardson fires one over the middle. The camera's going to get blocked by the ref's big old head right there, and it would land in the Lions hand. Hey, big head. And that would be a touchdown. Hey, big head indeed. And said the Lions are on the board, and they're going to strike right back as Amarian Parks finds his way in for the end zone. Another score, and before you know it, Enterprise is down 14 to zero. And sadly, Prattville kept their foot on the gas. Richardson finding Camarian Shanks in the flat, and he's going to score his second touchdown of the night and uh, not looking good early on for Enterprise. But they'll get a block punt touchdown ensuing kickoff. They're going to put an onside kick, and the kicker is going to run down the field and catch it right after it goes 10 yards. It's a clean play and a clean recovery. Enterprise back on the ball will lead to a field goal attempt. However, this one has the leg, but it's just wide left. So the Cats will turn it back over to the Lions, and Prattville will take advantage. It's Cam Richardson going back through the air, goes to the end zone, and it's Mr. Shanks again, his third touchdown grab of the night. Prattville up 28 to 7, and they go on to take this one 42 to 6. Well, in Houston County, a tale of two different stories. Wicksburg winning three straight, hosting Geneva County, who's lost four straight. That's right now. Geneva County has the right to ship to stay in the playoff hunt. Here come the Panthers of Wicksburg. Off to a nice win on the road over Abbeville. And the Bulldogs here coming back after a tough loss against their rival foe, Geneva. Now late in the Panthers first drive. Ackerman gets the low snap, recovers, rolls it out to Aiden Rice. He gets it for a short start, but that drive would stall. We go on to the second quarter. Ackerman making the handoff. Boom, boom. Whoa, where, where, where we go, cameraman? Oh, there we go. Tyler Williams, 45-yard gain, and the ball is in the red zone. That deep pass pays off. Maddox, Burkhart gets the direct snap and gets the easy six. Panthers trial first. After a fumble, though, on the kickoff, Panthers begin the ball. Mason Burkhart gets the snap and drops it back again to Williams, and he lays out absolute dime of a catch. A perfect dime, enough for six, but they come away with three to put the Panthers up 9-0 at the end of the first half. Wicksburg picks up that fourth straight win, knocking off Jenko 23-14. And in the same region, Arrington has been, well, let's just say red hot, hosting the Bears tonight of Cottonwood. All right, I don't know what you get when you mix purple and red, 
But hey, all things working well for Ayrton. Don't you 2A get looks black? to go through. Maybe, I don't know. I'm not a really color guy. Well, Ayrton looking good so far this season. And tonight, had to shake things up with the backup quarterback. That's Andon Garris. And here we are in the highlight. He's going to hand it off to Jordan Smith. Why not? That's the best way to do it if you're Ayrton. Number one, showing us why he's going to rack up yards and numbers all season long during his senior year campaign. This time, he's going to get into the end zone for a 30 yard score. Cotton went back on the ball, trying to get back into it. Caden Simmons under center takes the snap, picks the handoff. Look at who his man on the right side of the field. However, he's going to find a purple cat. That's Landon Tyler, a great receiver showing like, hey, receivers can't play defensive back. And now a cash in via Jordan Smith once again, stiff arming his way through a couple of Bears defenders and piling in to the score. Ayrton up 14 to 0. Psych, let's make that a two point conversion. And they're in there. All things going well. And after an offsides by the Bears, Purple Cats had that half distance for the extra point. And the Purple Cats go on to win this one. 40 to 6. They're now 6 in 1 on the year. We're going to head out now to Henry County, the Abbeville Yellow Jackets and Samson Tigers both need a win. That's right. Samson is still looking for that win number one, of course, while Abbeville trying to keep that pace in the two-way region two. Abbeville would hit a field goal before Ahmad Billens finding Cameron Wallace for the bubble. 21 yards to the house. Yeah, baby, Willie, we see you. You see us. 10-0 Jackets. Dab him up. Give him some love. He deserves it, right? Now, first play in the second quarter. Wait for this one. Wontavious Conley, ooh, gets this one after a nearly blocked punt. At the 30, okay, rolls a ride out to the 50. No one touching him. He's going to get to the side. No one's coming for him. Nobody. 70 yards to the house. 17-0. The bill of Ab goes up. We having a fun time there in Abbeville. But Mix and Brody calling his own number. Tigers get in the end zone and they trail by 10, but that's as close as they ever get. The Tiger, the Tigers, well, let's just say the Jackets get them by the tail. Abbeville, 53-22. And our final highlight from tonight's action, Kinston Bulldogs back at home taking on Pleasant Home. Yep, Rudy Free and the Bulldogs have lost four straight, so a win obviously going a long way out there in Kinston. And here they are starting with the ball. Jeb Crosby takes the direct snap, follows his blockers. Get out my way, sir. And he's going to get a first down and into Eagle territory. The Bulldogs go leader in the drive. Kale Sumlin, he'll fake the give, lowers his shoulder past the man, slips arms another, and he's inside the 15-yard line right there. And that's going to say, hey, let's end it up with Sumlin again, getting his first touchdown of this game. And Kinston up 6-0 to here, and he would not be done as the cheerleaders getting the crowd rowdy out there. And Mr. Sumlin again, this time right up the middle once again, makes another man miss, turns him around, and he's not going to have the speed to catch him. Kale with his second touchdown in the first quarter of a pleasant home would answer. Mason Anderson, he would drive it in from a short distance to get the Eagles back into a one-score game. Ensuing kickoff, though, Dylan Davis will get on the right side of the field. He's going to return it up the middle of the field, runs past one tackler right there, and then he's got a lane up the middle of the field. And Mr. Davis all the way into Pleasant Home Territory. And that would get up another touchdown for Mr. Sumlin as Kinston goes on to win 47 to 13. A big win there for them. Oh, man. Well, Delta return to Rip Hughes Stadium, of course. Thursday, take it on 7 a foe, Phoenix City. Now, the Red Devils, Jalen Epps would end up taking the snap here. Boom. There he is right there. Middle finds a huge hole, taking it all the way down to the 12th and 20 yard line before he gets a little scrimmage. Boom, right there. Two plays later, Cameron Coleman would take the handoff to give his Red Devils the lead. Can't be thrown around there. Got them muscles. I like it. I like it. Now, Delta would respond as Raymond Blackman would even the game with the Red Devils. They tie it all up at seven, but two plays later, this game going fast. Epps, boom, Carmelo English to put the Red Devils up 14 to seven. And right before the half, Epps, once again, find Coleman. This time, it's an easy six. He ain't just playing with sticks. Of course, Dothan falls to Phoenix City, 35 to 28. Now, Ashford would take on Daleville, and it was quite the show. The shoe is on the other table that's been turned, and as Daleville winning three straight for once is not the underdog hosting 0-5 Ashford. Right off the bat, we get crazy out in here, right? Having a great time. Ashford goes up 8-0, start the second quarter, 5-20 in the second. Ball on the Ashford 45. Pickney, who you crying to remember, he's been the player of the week once or twice here. Not just rolling softly. Now cheer up big. He's not going to give us just one, but two. They go and tie it up at eight. Next thing you know, Ashford answering back. Boom, the number wow. 17 in the corner. But wait, did he catch it? That was the question. Head coach Will Garner doesn't believe so. The rest, they have a little talk and 
It's good. 16-8 Yellow Jackets. Ashford returns the touchdown after an illegal man on the field before Will Hart showing the heart to Lawrence, who throws the bubble and Coy Paramore. They put it up and Ashford gets their first one of the season. First one since October 29th, 2020. Big time. I was, a, I was a senior in high school, Michael. That's how <laughs> long ago this was. Oh my 38 to 22. <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead in that same region down in 3A. Undefeated Houston Academy hosting Strawn last night. These are all Thursday night games right now. After an HA field goal, Strawn punches it in to take a 7 to 3 lead here early on in this one, but the Raiders would come right back, and their quarterback, Kaden Mitchell, says, Hey, you want to score a QB rushing touchdown? I'll do you one better there as he dives over a man and scores from about the four yard line. And the Raiders back out in front, 10 to 7. But the Tigers, they would come right back. Fourth and two from the 50. Aaron O'Hava gets the gift, and he is going to take this one fourth and two all the way to the house as Strawn retakes the lead, 14 to 10. This was a back and forth game last night. Happy to be there because the Raiders, they weren't done on offense. Mitchell going to use his arm this time, finding George Zeron in the corner of the end zone, gets both feet down. Raiders back on top, 17 to 14. And before you can blink, Jeb Daughtry had himself a first half as he scores his first touchdown of the night. Raiders took a 23 to 21 lead into the break, and they will go on to win 6 and 0. The Raiders are. How about the Oakland or Las Vegas Raiders? They could use some of these Houston Academy Raiders victories as uh, Las Vegas is 0 and 3, not looking mm -hmm. good. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the the whole thing is to say what, what, what now is it? I, I, what is that? What HA's thing is? It's like what. What? Have you? I, I gotta know. look it up. I saw it on Instagram this what? morning. They got T-shirts. You got me like, saying what? They got saying what with like a crane. I can't. I gotta get a T-shirt. They gotta, gotta send a us a T-shirt. I'll wear one. All right. Now the Northside Methodist Academy Knights visiting the Providence Christian Eagles, both of the which are teams trying to get back in the win column. And of course, one of them's gotta do it, right? Second quarter, Knights QB Harrison Hicks. You know what he likes to do? He likes to hick it over to his main man. Unfortunately, though, Harrison Mims gets the pick six in that instant and nothing just over four minutes to play in the half eagles on the eagles next drive it's second down all right qb craig pittman third looks for a man picks up a big gain for the home team gets right out of bounds in time hopefully fourth down province Leighton edger kicks that 24 yard field goal right down the middle perfect and we head into the half 10 nothing providence christian and that is what would really help seal this win. 17-14, close wins like that are won on plays like that before yeah, the half. Yeah, made the in. difference right there. All right, well, let's head out to Western Coffee County as another undefeated team, the Elba Tigers, taking on the Red Devil, Red Level Tigers in a battle with the Tigers here. And that's a beautiful helmet that's been scraped up a bit, but that means good things because that means you're making plays typically on defense. Well, here they are, Elba in the red zone. Justin Coleman going to get the handoff, and he's going to find Pater right now as Elba gets on the board early on in this one. Tigers next drive. It's Alvin Henderson from a short yardage out. I don't even know if he touched the defending player, but he scores, and it's up 14-0. Mr. Henderson this time going from a one-yard touchdown to about a 75-yard touchdown as number two, showing us why he has so many offers from across the country in Division I programs. That's B getting him untouched into the house. 21-0 in favor of the home Tigers. The road Tigers trying to put up a fight, but the trick play is going to go against them as Elba's going to run the Statue Whoa. of Liberty. And it ends in the hands of Justin Coleman, who's wide all by himself on the sideline. Number three can only manage to stare as he sprints and tries to catch him. Coleman gets in uncontested. 42-6 to six, Elba, improving 2-5-0. and oh. How about that? Well, New Brockton 0-5 oh going into the game. This game hoping for their first win up against Pike County. And, of course, it was nothing but a good game for sure. Gabe Harrington rolls out to the outside, but it's picked off by Jeremy Ch Chimara. Ch Chimarian. Chimarian. Chimarian Brown who runs for 22 yards. Now, Omari Barrow drops back. Can't find anyone, so why not? Let's just go for a 20 yard touchdown. Dogs up 7 0 before the next kickoff is received by Matthew Smith and immediately stripped by Jemiah Rump. Picked up by Pike County and Everybody's having a good time there in the band section. First quarter, 14-0, Pike County picked off by his Ian Foster. Man, or it's just killing all, all, all Pike County's way. But second quarter, 14-0, of course, short pass to Ian again. Blitz it through, knock it off his helmet in the process. And eventually, Pike County takes this one 38-0. New Brock is still looking for a game win or win number one, yep. sitting 0-6. Yep, and another win. this team is the Houston County Lions. They hosted Florala last night out there in Columbia. And here the Wildcats are the 
for Alla Wildcats, trying to punt on their fourth down, and the Lions defense is going to get a block after Ooh. a makeshift punt, you could call that, and they get a recovery, and they'll return it deep inside of Florala territory by Deshaun Wynn. However, that wouldn't do much with it. The Wildcats would stop the Lions, they're on their next possession. They get it in for a touchdown via Rashawn Coleman as he gets on the board for Florala. Now Lions trying to do something on offense, going for it, but it's a fumble and recovered by John Howe of Florala. Very next play for the Wildcats. They're going to fumble it up, and Isariel Todd recovers it. So hey, let's just give it back and forth. Why don't we? Houston County will give it back eventually as the Wildcats would show that they're going to have their way on the ground tonight. And it's how getting the handoff this time, not fumbling it. Instead, rubbling and tumbling with the cast on. He scores. Wildcats take this one 27-27. 2-0. Now it's time for that play of the night. Michael, are we going to give them the play of the night tonight or from last this is, night? This is from tonight. Tonight? Tonight. Oh, I, I think I rec recognize this play. Yep. Let's play the bump. Play of the night. Sponsored by Lewis Smith Supply Company. Now our play of the night comes right out of Abbeville. First play of the second quarter, and here she goes. Boom, right in the hands of Wontavious Conley. Says, yeah, I like the end zone better. 70 yards better, that is. We put the Yellow Jackets up 7-0, leading to their first win since week three. All right, well, let's go ahead and run through some scores from area games that were out of our district tonight. And here we go. Our first one up is Abbeville Christian at Sparta Academy. Sparta not really showing off anything Spartan-like. They lose to Abbeville Christian, who's coming back with the win, 40-20. to 20. Yeah, and then we got Geneva and Andalusia, the big for a powerhouse showing what they're made of 69 to 19 over the uh, Panthers. And then, of course, Headland knocking off the Tigers of Greenville 38 to 22. That's a great l game for the. Uh, the Rams, yeah. The Rams, yeah. Four We're and two. In the Rams. All right, well, let's go back and uh, quickly go through some of the scores that we brought you as well. Ashford beating Daleville 38-22, and then Houston Academy knocking off Strawn 33-27. And then, of course, we talked about that very close game between the Providence Christian Eagles and the Northside Methodist Knights. 17-14 is the final there. And, of course, our beloved Wolves here in Dothan, Alabama. Follow the Red Devils of Phoenix City, 35-28. to 28. All right, so speaking of Dothan, we're going to look at next week's games. And Dothan coming off a loss, but so is Enterprise. That'll be our game of the week because, hello, two 7-8 rivals going up against each other. you got to make it your play of the game of the night. And, uh, by the way, this one, probably going to settle 7-A Region 2, that four seed. Yeah. Both teams, Enterprise with three region losses, Dothan with two. Both still have to play up Alika, so a lot on the line next Friday night at Repuse. That's right. I've had a lot of people hit me up on the real Austin Greenland on Instagram. That's my Instagram at. They hit me up. It's not the bunch. fake Austin Greenland. No, it's not the fake. I'm the real. I keep it real with you. <laughs> that's why I'm the real sports guy. That's why I choose. That's what I pride myself on. Anyway, they've been talking about how this student section is going to be the biggest and loudest ever. I can't oh, wait yes. to hear about it. Sylvie will tell us. Yeah, if you're going to go to that game, get there at 6 because parking <laughs> is going to be a nightmare, I presume, by everyone's trying to get to this game. That's true. That's true. Well, let's go ahead and take another look. Headland and taking on Carroll and Northside Methodist will be hosting undefeated Houston Academy. Yep. And then Dale County lost tonight, trying to get back in the win column against another team who lost tonight, Geneva. That's right. Well, all right. So we're just all about out of time here for another Extra Point Overtime episode. And it is very sad. Yes. Very sad. <laughs> Anyway, you can definitely go ahead and vote for Cheer and Band of the Week on our website, WDHN. Look at the sports column. Doop, doop, doop. Drag down. You should see the voting. Go ahead, click on your school. I love to meet your cheer team. Love to meet your band. I'll be there personally. Yep. Then, of course, we got the coaches poll. Coaches, if you're listening now, if I text you, hit them up. Hit me up with your top 10 teams you think did well this week in the Wiregrass. I'm sure. Ashford is going to be a, a favorite. Hey, got to be. Robin Tyra deserves it. He Definitely. deserves it. He's actually, uh, I, I called and he's actually uh, on vacation or something. He's out of town. <laughs> he's probably going fishing. That man loves the fish. <laughs> That's true. Very true. Well, we got that. And then, of course, Player of the Week. Yep. Did we decide what we're doing on Player of the Week? They'll have to find out later. Oh. Let's keep it a tease right now. Keep track. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Keep track of me, myself, on Greenland underscore WDHN. That's on Twitter. Now, of course, Mike Rinker, what's what's your Twitter at? M Rinker TV. That's right. right. Tune in. Wake up Wiregrass Monday at 5 a.m. A little bit earlier than what we're doing right now. I don't know. I'm not up that early. <laughs> Noon, <laughs> noon's kind of early for me anymore. But anyway, thank you guys for watching us. Always make gains. Always find a way. Yep. Roll tie. War Eagle. Go Trojans. Let's go Mountaineers. Have a great weekend, guys. <laughs>